I recognize the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Gates, for five minutes. Mr. Storch, you're our watchdog. Ukraine has a corruption problem, right? Uh, you, there's a long history of issues with corruption in Ukraine. I don't Infrastructure minister arrested for stealing $400,000. Deputy head of Zelensky's office can't explain where the sports cars came from, so he had to resign. Uh, deputy defense minister resigned over contracting corruption, but the defense ministry put out a statement that his resignation was a worthy deed. And the wife of a former Ukrainian politician was found with $22 million in cash crossing the border into Hungary last year. Seems as though a lot of the zeal for enforcement of the anti-corruption efforts seems to align with the Republican control of the House of Representatives in our country. Maybe that's a coincidence. But let's get to this, this end-use monitoring you testified to. The Arms Control Act of 1996 requires end-use monitoring for certain defense art articles that are sold or leased, right? Correct. And there's no feature of anything we've passed that exempts what we've given to Ukraine from those requirements in the Arms Control Act, right? Not, not exempts. There are different uh, provisions as to how that plays Look, out that in different circumstances. That is controlling law, controlling policy. And here's, here's the upshot. As you testify here today, you cannot testify, truthfully under oath, that the DOD has complied with the policy and law regarding end-use monitoring during all times of this conflict. Isn't that right? So I, I want to be careful here when I respond to you, Congressman, to make sure that, that I'm clear. We are conducting a series of evaluations that look at the controls that DOD has in place to ensure that they are taking the steps that are required. I, I get all that, but, but here's the, the operative question. We haven't complied with, with end-use monitoring according to the law with everything we've sent to Ukraine to date, have we? So our 2020 report, which is our last public report on this, made a number of recommendations. All of those have been I know, met. I know, but you're, you're sort of dodging the question. You cannot testify that we have complied with the end-use monitoring requirements at all times during this conflict, can you? So our, our, we have an ongoing evaluation right now. I get right that it's now. ongoing. I'm looking backwards. You cannot testify that everything is complied with the law and the end-use monitoring, can you? So uh, some of that gets into the classified report that right, we issued right. previously. But I think everyone watching this could but, see that if you could testify to that, you would. You're citing a classified report. I don't know why that report's classified. I think the American people deserve to know if this 1996 law is being followed or not. You can't testify that it is being followed, and so I think they can draw reasonable conclusions from that. Do we, have, D Dr. Call, do we have uh, DOD personnel in Ukraine now? We do. We have a couple dozen at the embassy. Other than the embassy, any other personnel? Nope. How about CIA? Are there tr training folks in Ukraine? Uh, not going to talk about that in, a, in an unclassified setting. Happy to talk about that further in the classified briefing. Is the Azov Battalion getting access to U.S. weapons? Uh, not that I'm aware of, um, but if you have information, uh, I'd, I'd happy seek to share it. consent to enter into the record the Global Times investigative report. That, uh, indicate, that talks about training. It's uh, from the Atlantic Council's Digital Forensics Research Lab, uh, citing that the Azov Battalion was even getting stuff as far back as 2018. Without objection, so ordered. Any reason to disagree with that assessment, Dr. Is this Paul? the, I'm sorry, is this the Global Times from China? No, this is, well. That's what you read. Yeah, it might be, yeah. Would that be a reason? Uh, I, I, as a general matter, I don't take Beijing's propaganda. Well, no, no, yeah, but just value. tell me if the, if the allegation is true or false. I mean, uh, it, I don't have any evidence one way or the okay. other. As a general matter, I don't take Beijing's propaganda at face value. Fair, fair enough. I would agree with that assessment. April 2022, uh, President Biden is describing the supplemental funding that we're providing to Ukraine. He says, quote, it's also going to help schools and hospitals open. It's going to allow pensions and social support to be paid to the Ukrainian people so they have something, something in their pocket. So do, it, it's, help me understand how U.S. taxpayers paying for pensions in Ukraine is, is a good idea for our country. Uh, I would defer you to other parts of our government. The Department of Defense doesn't have a role in, in uh, pensions in Ukraine. You're a senior Biden administration official. The president said that it's really important that we keep funding the pensions in Ukraine. I would observe that the U.S. Census Bureau says that in 2022, the U.S. pension shortfall is $1.4 trillion. So, while we have a corrupt Ukrainian government, while we have our watchdog here who can't say that we followed the law on end-use monitoring, we have the President of the United States saying we need to fund pensions in Ukraine, 
Meanwhile, the pensions of our fellow Americans are in greater jeopardy. Mr. Chairman, I see that my time has expired, but I seek uh, unanimous consent to enter a number of articles into the record. If I may. Objection so ordered. Uh, very well. Uh, gentleman's time has expired. Chair, and I recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Connor, for five minutes.